Hey guys, today we are going to be talking about dream catchers. I'm sure most of you at least know like what a dream catcher is, but some of you might not know all the details like that go into a dream catcher. Um, these are like really popular. People have them as tattoos. People have them as decorations in their houses. But like I said, a lot of people don't really know the story behind the dream catcher. So, as I'm sure most of you do know, dream catchers do come from indigenous people. They created these to catch bad dreams and let the good dreams pass through to us. So, with the dream catcher, there are some certain elements. The first element we notice is the circle. Now, for different tribes, this may mean different things. However, many tribes do agree that the circle represents the circle of life. There's no real ending, there's no real beginning. It's all one continuous circle. Then inside the circle, we have a web. The web is what traps all of the bad dreams. However, the good dreams, they go down to our next element, which are the feathers, and they filter through the feathers and they pass on to us while we sleep. So the web catches the bad dreams, the feather sends the good dreams through to us. In the web, a lot of the times different tribes will put in gems and stones, things like that. These gems and stones represent the spider that made the web. So it's completely up to you how you make your dream catchers. But I do think it's very important that you know like the story and the meaning behind them and they're not just like some random pretty object that you have hanging up. I think it's important to know why they're important to indigenous people. So to make our project, we are going to need pencils, a permanent marker of some sort. We'll need like a piece of like computer paper or lined paper. We're gonna use it to help us make our circles. You'll want an eraser. Um, you'll want some crayons. I actually don't have any here, so I use colored pencils, but that doesn't really work. And then you'll want some watercolors. So to get started, we are going to start by making our circles. Now, in class, a lot of the times people always ask me, can I trace something? Can I do this? And then I sit there and I say no. And then I try to show you how to draw a realist or like a nice, perfect circle. However, whenever we are drawing multiple circles like this, you want to make sure they're actually pretty perfect. To do this, you're going to take a piece of paper and you're just going to like fold it up just like that. Um, you might want to have a thumbtack. Sometimes thumbtacks are easier to push through all these layers of paper than just one pencil. But you're going to take your pencil and you're going to poke holes in your paper equal distance apart. Um, if you really want to, you can get out a ruler and measure and make sure they're actually like the equal distance. But then you have these little holes. Then what you're going to do is you're going to take one pencil, stick it in this back hole. Then you can take your other, stick it through, and just go in your circle. You can, you gotta move your nose, dude. Don't lift up your paper, then just move on to your next one. If your paper moves on you, you might need to like tape it down or something. Move on to the next one. I suggest making them a little bit closer than what I actually have mine. Um, I think then you can go through and add a lot more details and it just looks nicer. I would say do like probably six or eight um, rings, but for the purpose of this tutorial, I'm just gonna do three just so I can quickly show you. All right, hopefully you can see that. You might not be able to, but there are three perfect circles there. Next thing you're going to do is you are going to fill each ring with some sort of design. You want to do the same thing in all the rings. So you don't want to like do like hearts on part of it and then switch to something else and then switch to something else. In this ring, I did all hearts. This ring, I did circles. This ring, I did, I don't know, whatever that shape is and a little triangle. I did lines. I did like arches. And in this one, I actually did little letter Ds. Um, you could think about things you like. Like if you really like baseball, maybe you fill one of your rings with baseballs. If you really like music, maybe you fill one of your rings with music notes. I wish I'd actually thought of that whenever I was making mine, but 
The only one I really did was the letter D for my name. I've seen some people also like try to incorporate their zodiac sign if you are into astrology. So up to you. But this is what I did for mine. So you're going to take your pencil, you're going to go through and you're going to draw, I'm going to add one more circle to mine actually, and you're going to draw your symbols. Again, for the purpose of this tutorial, I'm just going to do a couple in each one so that way we can move on and this video is not an hour long. I'm going to add some stars, peaches. Hey, nobody's here. Then I am going to add maybe like a moon. I have a starry night pop socket on my phone and I just happened to see it, which is why I did the moon. All right. so. I would keep going around and fill up my entire circles. If you want, you can add a little bit more to each section. Like in this one, after I added these like blue things, then I went through and added the triangles with the hearts. After I was done with those, I went back and added the circles. So it's up to you. Once you are done with that, we need to add feathers. So to draw your feather, we are going to start with a base. That looks like that. I'm actually gonna, well, I don't really wanna do that. Permanent marker, because you erase. So we start with our base like that. Then we just continue the feather. And you can look up different kinds of feathers. If you want, you can have some pointy. If you want, you can have some that aren't quite so pointy. Up to you. Then we are going to draw a line that goes straight down the middle to the point. After that, we are going to draw a couple like little V shapes coming out from the middle that goes to the end. And then you are going to erase away that part right there. So it looks like that. If you want, you can also add a few little lines to make it look like your feather is actually detailed as well. So here's the deal. My video stopped recording again and I saw it once I was completely done. I thought I fixed the issue, but apparently I didn't, but I think I fixed it for real now. So um, I really don't have the time to go back and completely redo stuff, so I'm just going to kind of re-explain it. So we just finished drawing our rings and our symbols and our feathers. Next thing you're going to do is you are going to take your permanent marker and you are going to trace everything. So when you're tracing circles, um, it's really important. You really want to keep like your hand just down in a fixed spot and you don't really move your fingers. You move your wrist. Your hand stays in the same position. You just move your wrist and then you move your paper as you go. So I'm going to go here. Then I'm gonna move my paper. Move my paper. Move my paper. Move my paper. So there's how you trace your circles pretty easily. Don't forget, make sure that you trace all of your symbols. So I traced your hearts. Um, make sure that you trace nice and slowly. If you go too quickly, it's kind of just a mess. And then you have a lot of stuff that you have to erase later. You'll also trace your string for your feather. You'll trace your feather as well. If you want, you can add a string up here so it looks like your dream catcher is actually hanging from something. Once you are done with that, you are going to take your eraser and make sure you erase away all of the pencil marks that you can still see. Get rid of all of those pencil marks. So now once you have that done, this is whenever you should use crayons. 
Um, if you don't have crayons, you can use colored pencils or marker like I'm about to do. However, it won't turn out quite right. Um, the reason we want to use colored pencils, is, or no, the reason we want to use crayons is because we will be going over this with watercolor in a minute. If we go over crayons with watercolors, then the watercolor doesn't touch it, kind of like we did with the Monet oil resist. It's oil and water, they don't mix. So, with the colored pencils, unfortunately, it will kind of cover it up a little bit. With the markers, um, if you have permanent markers, I would use those. If you just have like washable markers, that probably won't work very well because once you put water on it, it'll bleed everywhere. So you're just gonna go through in each section and color in little pieces that you want to color. So you don't have to color in everything. Like in this section, I did the big circles. I didn't do the circles in the middle. Um, just do little parts that you want to pop out. I also only stuck to using four colors. If you want, you can use, you can use more, but it's up to you. So once you have it all colored, then this is whenever we do the watercolors. If you have watercolor paper and you do this on watercolor paper, the easiest way to get this effect is to pick up your paper, literally just turn on the sink and put the paper under the sink. And then you take your watercolors and you just dot them along and let them fall down. However, if you're just using plain like printer paper or something, you can't do that because it's just gonna ruin your paper. So instead we're kind of gonna do like our wet on wet technique that we did with Georgia O'Keeffe. So we're gonna take just plain water. And we're gonna paint just sections of the paper with water. The easiest thing I think for this project, don't try to do the whole paper because by the time you get to painting, some areas are already gonna be dry. So you're just gonna do some thin, long strips that go from the top to the bottom. So I just did a really thin strip right here. Then you are going to have the paper standing up. You're gonna take some paint and you are going to dot it. Now, see, I'm gonna kinda help it work its way down the paper. I'm gonna dot it all the way down and just kinda let it drip as it needs to. Then you would take your other colors. So for mine, I used red, orange, or no. I used pink, orange, and yellow. Use whatever colors you want on yours. If you wanna just do one color, you can. I think it looks better if you use at least like three colors personally. But once you're done with this section, hopefully it's still wet, and then you can move on to your next section, kind of connect them. That way this section can bleed into this one and it all looks smooth and connected. Alrighty, that is it for this project. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope maybe you learned a thing or two about dream catchers, so now you know more information about them. If you have any questions, as always, send me an email. Make sure that you send me pictures. I hope you guys are doing really well. Um, me personally, I'm kind of struggling. I miss seeing people. I miss being at school with you guys. And quite honestly, I am sick of making these videos. Like, I will keep doing them for you guys, but I just think it's so much easier to actually be with you. I just, I still feel dumb talking to a camera. So, Hopefully you guys are having fun. Hopefully you enjoy the videos and I will see you next time.